You've seen something like this, a game that shares just a little bit too much with another popular video game. Do the characters look a little familiar? Does the name sound kind of familiar too? Are the main characters' names Shmario and Shmaluigi? Well, you might have a ripoff or bootleg game on your hands. These gems have existed since the first video game consoles. Nowadays, you mostly find ripoff and bootleg games on mobile since those games are still very basic. Today, we'll be looking at some of the most shameless ripoffs of Super Mario. Before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest videos from the gamer. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at 10 games that shamelessly ripped off Super Mario. 3D Cartoon Land Safari The first entry on this list is a doozy. We may see 2D ripoffs on the App Store from time to time, but it takes at least some effort in bringing that ripoff into the third dimension. 3D Cartoon Land Safari is inspired by the Super Mario franchise. If by inspired you mean entirely ripped off, then yes, it is inspired. The game is beyond basic, and we mean basic. I'm talking pumpkin spice and Uggs basic. Mobile games are nothing to really write home about, and the technical aspects of games back in 2012 were even lower. However, 3D Cartoon Land Safari looks like it was made in a day. In the game, you play as a faceless Mario-looking character with blue overalls, a red hat, a mustache, and blonde hair. You traverse a mostly barren 3D world, stomping on Goombas with blank thousand-yard stares. The game is very minimal, to say the least, and it offers nothing other than what it has stolen from other games. With something so basic and blatantly stolen, it's surprising to see this game has survived on the Apple App Store for so long. It didn't get many reviews, only one in fact. It simply read, avoid at all costs. And we're inclined to believe whoever wrote this. Super Jump World one of the biggest running jokes in the Mario fandom is that Mario is Italian, which makes for some pretty off-color jokes. There have been skits done about Mario and Luigi if they acted more like an Italian stereotype. Heck, the running gag got a new breath of life when Nintendo released the trailer of Super Mario Odyssey where they showed Mario in a swimsuit. The internet was quick to mention that if Mario was really an Italian male, he would be a lot, uh, hairier. Stereotypes aside, this next ripoff asks the hard questions, like what if Mario was an Irish leprechaun rather than an Italian plumber? Enter the clever and originally named title Super Jump World, where literally everything in Super Mario World is here with switched assets. So instead of mushrooms, there are shamrocks. Instead of Goombas, there are these weird pill bugs. This shameless ripoff lasted less than a month before being pulled from the App Store. However, this did not stop them from re-releasing the game under a new name, Lep's World. Nothing really changed in the game, and all the reasons that it got kicked in the first place remained in the game. Want to make a crappy ripoff? Just do it. Want to get away with it? Change the name. Monino. If there is one thing you can safely rely on in this world, it's death, taxes, and bad ripoffs. These are infamous in the gaming community, from the hilariously bad Pokemon bootleg Vietnam Crystal to the Final Fantasy VII Famicom bootleg. However, this one may surpass them all. Behold, money no. Please hold your applause. Some games steal assets from other games and try to pass them off as their own. But some of the greatest bootlegs have the audacity to try and take the entire game and pass it off as their own. To up the ante, these guys over at Leechy Studios tried to take from Nintendo's most popular franchise? Well, it may be number three on this list, but Monino takes the cake for having the most guts when it comes to blatant theft. It should come as no surprise to anyone that this game is no longer on the App Store. And after they were so careful in changing the name from Mario to Monino. In fact, it got taken off the App Store so fast, some even say the game does not exist. However, a video posted by YouTuber MrMyJ8 shows a video of him playing the game on his iPad, and boy, oh boy, is it bad. Princess Rescue We've been talking about mobile game ripoffs for a while now. Maybe it's because it's still a new breed of games, but it certainly was back then and copycat games were rampant. Some would argue that they still are to this day. However, sometimes these knockoffs can come from dedicated fans and hardware wizards. A famous example would be 2013's Princess Rescue. This was a homebrew Atari 2600 cartridge made by animator Chris Spry. Chris rigged a Mario knockoff that ran on the 1977 hardware, giving it the classic Atari 
Atari style. When asked, Chris said he was inspired by a similar demake of Mega Man on the Atari platform. Chris accomplished this by using a program called Batari Basic, which let just about anyone recreate an Atari program. It was easier to use than the assembly language, which was the developer tool of choice back then. The game boasts several features that the original game did not. In 2013, there were even physical copies being sold, but of course, it did not last. There were strong hints Nintendo slapped a cease and desist on Chris, preventing him from selling his creation. ROMs are still available for the game online, however, and we suggest you give it a chance. I actually played this, and let me tell you, it feels exactly like you'd imagine it would if Mario was made eight years earlier. Not great, but strangely impressive. The Great Gina Sisters if you think the only people who ever ripped off Nintendo games were Chinese mobile app developers, you would be sorely mistaken. The fact is, people were ripping off Nintendo since the old days of gaming. If you want proof, look no further than The Great Gina Sisters, which was released in 1987 for the Commodore 64. The game is about a girl named Gina who wakes up in a mysterious land. She must find the diamonds and wake up from this nightmare. There were a few problems that gamers quickly pointed out. The strange land Gina had fallen asleep in looked an awful lot like Super Mario World. In fact, the very first level plays out almost exactly like the first level of Mario. The enemies looked like Goombas, just with horns, and the same yellow blocks appeared throughout the level. Because of all these similarities, Nintendo pressured the game developers, Time Warp Productions and Rainbow Arts, to pull their game from retail shelves. Today, the game is highly collectible, and there are some ROMs available online if you want to play the game for yourself. There was a sequel in development during this time called Gina 2, Arthur and Martha in the Future World, but due to legal action around the first game, it was never finished. Full Screen Mario In this world of rip-offs and bootlegs, companies today need to take a firm stance when it comes to illegal representations of their property. In some instances, this can be seen as harsh, as fan-made projects and remakes can be listed under the same category as rip-offs. There is a huge debate around it, and here is just one of the examples. Full Screen Mario was a fan-made game where the original Super Mario was made with HTML5 and turned into a browser game. The game featured a level editor and a random level button long before Mario Maker was released. Needless to say, the website got a lot of attention. Too much attention as it turns out. Nintendo found out about full screen Mario and slapped the website with a DMCA claiming the website stole assets from their game. Which, when you get right down to it, is technically correct. The people at full screen Mario were not trying to steal the game and make a profit or try to pass it off as their own. But it was not their game, and in the eyes of the law, Nintendo had every right to take the site down. After the DMCA, Full Screen Mario found a home temporarily on GitHub before Nintendo found out and repeated the whole process over again. What did we learn about all this? Don't f*** with Nintendo. Super Mario 64 HD HD Remakes, the current trend in gaming. From the Crash Bandicoot HD remake to the bajillion Kingdom Hearts remakes and the Final Fantasy VII remake constantly looming over everyone's heads, which admittedly does look pretty cool, wouldn't it be great to have an HD remake of Super Mario 64? You know, the game that's said to be one of the greatest platformers in gaming history. Yeah, it would be a great idea for Nintendo to release something along those lines. Of course, we're getting something similar with Super Mario Odyssey, but we're talking talking about an HD remake of the classic Super Mario 64. Enter Super Mario 64 HD. In 2015, Eric Ross released a fan-made tech demo where he recreated the bob -omb Battlefield level from Super Mario 64 using the Unity game engine. He released a two-minute video which featured a demo and a link where people could play the demo themselves. Shortly after the website went live, Nintendo pressured for a takedown of the site, claiming it allowed players to play a game containing unauthorized copyrighted material. Eric did admit that the game featured more than just models of Mario. He ripped several sound effects and assets from Super Mario Galaxy in order to make his game. As a result, the whole operation was shut down. Mole Kart Mario Kart changed the scene for racing games when it rolled out onto the video game scene in 1992. Since then, there have been hundreds of copycats and ripoffs trying to capture the same lightning Mario Kart had, but some of these lifted more than just concepts. Enter Mole Kart, a mobile kart racing game where not only the idea of Mario Kart is copied, 
but the tracks too. In the game, several tracks are remarkably similar to famous Mario Kart tracks. For example, one of the courses is a beat-for-beat -beat recreation of Mushroom Gorge from Mario Kart Wii. It seems like the only thing Mole Kart didn't copy were the characters. This game was quickly booted off the Apple App Store, but unlike other entries on this list, Mole Kart has a kinda happy ending. Sometime later, Mole Kart would make its way back onto the App Store, but with smarter graphics and more original designs. It would go on to have a sequel, Mole Kart 2 Evolution. It seems like some game developers can learn their lesson when it comes to ripping off Nintendo games. Learn to make your own games. People might give your game a chance if they know it isn't stolen. Ultra Dario from Wario to now Dario, this is by far the most shameless ripoff on this list. Some of these entries have included some borrowed assets and some sounds, but this one copies the entire Super Mario formula and upgrades it to Ultra Dario. This game was released in 2012 by Box Itself and featured on the Slide Me App Store. The game features a hatless Mario-like figure running around collecting coins from boxes and moving from the left side of the screen to the right. Nothing we haven't seen before. In fact, it is something we have seen before in games like, oh, I don't know, Super Mario. This kind of obvious ripoff should come as no surprise to anyone, not even the developers. The game had a short time in the spotlight with some gaming media outlets covering it saying, yeah, it's a ripoff, but it's not that bad. Apparently, the game was nothing if not functional. Today, it sits and gathers dust at the Slide Me app store. The developers haven't made anything worth playing, and nothing that they have made has gotten as many downloads as Ultra Dario, but there may still be something more. Maybe one day we'll see something like Ultra Mega Lario. Flappy Bird While this game may not be the most shameful at ripping off Super Mario, it is the most famous and popular game to borrow Nintendo assets. 2014 was the year of Flappy Bird. <laughs> Still got it on my phone. If you were not aware of the craze, about three years ago, everyone and anyone had Flappy Bird on their phone. The game was simple. Tap the screen and make the dumb looking bird flap its wings for a second. The thing about Flappy Bird was that he was not very good at flying, so you had to keep tapping the screen to get him to fly. What makes things even harder was getting through the pipes to earn points. If you touched the ground or a pipe, Game over. People were addicted to this game, and it was trending for quite a while. There were just a few things wrong, however. The pipes looked an awful lot like those from the Super Mario games. Come to think of it, the background looked eerily similar to Super Mario World. Many people pointed this out, and it didn't take long before Nintendo was pressuring the developer with legal action over the visual similarities. Flappy Bird was discontinued on both iOS and Android later the same year. Luckily, you can still find versions of it online today with a quick Google search. And those were some of the most obvious and shameless ripoffs of Super Mario. Do you remember a Super Mario ripoff that we didn't mention in this list? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more exciting videos on the games you love. While you're here, check out our playlist. You might just find your next favorite video. Thanks for watching. Let's go!